Hey guys, welcome to the shop. Now, uh, this week is a pretty random video. I've got lots of things to show you. We got some cutter grinder work, we got some shaper work, and a little bit of lathe work, and several other things. So, haven't had a lot of shop time this week, but I got some stuff to share with you. So, let's go in the shop and get started. All right, guys, now in the lathe, I have my final hub out of this piece of material that I'm making for my cutter grinder. And what I want to do is park this piece off right up next to the chuck. And I don't have the tooling that I need in order to, to do it. So we're going to be making a parting blade. One that will let me get right up next to the chuck and not <laughs> crash, hopefully. So I'm going to bring in, I'm going to show you the problems that I have right now with the tooling that I currently have. And then we'll get started making one that should work. All right, so here's the parting blade that I've been using up to this point. And it will not work for this situation. I can't get up next to the... To the part I can't get past my parting line without interfering with the chuck jaws and stuff. So I basically need this tool with the parting blade off to the very farthest to the left that it can be. That way I can get right up in here, get right up next to the jaws, and part this piece off. I'm going to be using this uh, remnant or drop for a nut for this hub. So I want to be able to use it. I'm not going to take this out of the chuck and cut it in the saw. I want to make a blade simply because it'll be good for several situations other than just this. So I've got one roughed out already, a blank roughed out on the bench. Let's go over there and look at it and then we will finish grind it on the cutter grinder. Alright, so here's the piece of stool. stool. <laughs> here's the piece of steel we're going to use. It is a piece of Lath Robe Crusader XL high-speed steel, which I believe is M3, and this stuff grinds horribly. It's so hard to... It's abrasion-resistant tool steel, basically, and it just doesn't grind well. I mean, you can get a good finish on it, but you're not removing much material fast, that's for sure. Now, I did this, knocked this edge out of it with the pedestal grinder, and then I just refined the shape and the cutter grinder. So, that took a while. I tried a slitting saw, or not a sling saw, but an abrasive saw to just uh, cut my blank out. That didn't work either. It just created a bunch of heat. So old school, standing at the bench grinder for at least 30 minutes, and this is what I've got. I've got a couple of clips of me squaring this up. Oh, having a, a cutter grinder is great and all, but it definitely does not take the place of a good you know, bench grinder. And uh, to be completely honest, I'm very jealous of the uh, bench grinders that uh, Adams acquired lately, especially this or the one that he has and the new one that he got. Uh, I'm in the market for one of those, uh, and I've been scouring Craigslist, but uh, not easy to find those big, nice grinders. So this is what we're going to be using. And this will allow me to get right up next to those that chuck jaw and part that off. Now, right now, this is just rectangular. So it has no reliefs ground in it at all. So we're going to go over to the cutter grinder. We're going to do like our book shows here. We're going to put 2 degrees on the sides, sweeping relief, 15 degrees in the front, and then 3 degrees back rake on the top. And then, let's see, it will have about one degree taper to the back so these sides don't rub when it uh, you know, starts cutting. So let's go over to the cutter grinder, let's get this set up and make this thing into something useful. All right, so we're just about ready to grind this. We're going to be using just a conventional wheel. I think it's a 46K, I believe. And... Uh, this being a compound angle vise, we can do multiple angles at one time. We're going to be grinding both the, well, one side at a time, but two angles on that side. We're going to grind in our side relief so it narrows towards the bottom. And we're going to grind in our, I guess you'd call it the back relief, to where this tool narrows as it goes back. That way it just, it, that way it doesn't rub. So I'm going to bring you in and we'll get this thing set up and grind it. All right, so this is the top of our tool right here. And 
you know, this stuff has to be crazy tight. There's not a lot of pressure involved in grinding, really. Not uh, light grinding like this. So we want two degrees on the sides. That's close enough. And now we want the tool to narrow towards the back. So we're going to put in one degree there. And none of these have to be perfect. I mean, you know, just clearance. And uh, more is usually better than, or too much is better than too little. Let's just say that. And uh, a fixture like this is plenty good enough for grinding high speed steel for lathe use. So let's grind this side. All right. We're going to be using the coolant, our shop made coolant system. Vacuum. Wheel running. I know that back here is going to be my highest spot. So that's where I'm going to bring the wheel down and cut. There's that side. Now, coolant's not even necessary for grinding this high speed steel. I just uh, wanted to use it. This is my homemade system and it uh, works actually pretty good. It's a pressurized system, not a uh, Venturi system. So, a little touchy to get adjusted, but you know, for what it is, it actually works pretty good. So, now I just have to flip it over and dial in the same angles on this side and then we'll work our other ones all right guys if you watched last week i showed just these falls behind my shop you know flooded big time and uh, this clip here was filmed two days after that so you know it doesn't take long for it to go back down to normal and uh, you know this is about uh, where it stays right here there's the top of our tool and as you can see Hopefully you can see that. We've got uh, lots of side clearance, plenty. And then as far as the back, we've got just enough. So it's larger out here than it is back here, and larger up here than it is down here. So that way, hopefully the only part that's really touching uh, our work is the front edge, or the cutting edge. Now we got to come in and we're going to put our three degrees uh, back rake in there and then our uh, front clearance and we'll be done. So it's not too bad really. All right. All right. Sit up here. And uh, I'm not going to run cooling on the top here. I just don't think it's, it's just not necessary. I mean you don't get these hot enough to burn them up on the uh, bench grinder most of the time so I just don't think it's necessary to make any more mess probably than I really need to probably safer though I would say bring that back to zero three degrees here raise our head up Huh? 
I think, uh, I think we're ready. Well, that upper garden up there pretty much played out. It done really well. Tomatoes, of course, didn't do any good. But uh, this lower garden has really done well other than, of course, the tomatoes. You can see we got large ears on every, every stalk here. And this is the side that doesn't get as much sun. So the other side's even better. But about a week, I think. And uh, we'll be picking this. We got more corn this year than we know what to do with, uh, but uh, almost no tomatoes. Let me show you then. Plenty of deer footprints everywhere. They've been in here. There's our tomatoes, as sorry as they look. And it is literally like that the whole length. There's uh, the sweet potatoes over here and then uh, peppers. But, uh, Tomatoes look pretty sorry. About as bad as I've ever seen them. I think we just got too much rain. Getting pretty good. And some of the beetles on this one, but uh, won't be long. A few more days. That's about it. I uh, just uh, took a little uh, diamond file and cleaned up the uh, cutting edge to make it, you know, polished. And then the sides just a little, just knocked off the burrs really. And I think that that'll be good to go. Uh, let's uh, go put it in the lathe and try it. But first, look who's sneaking in on us. <laughs> How am I supposed to get anything done in here? <laughs> can't stay focused. Let's let's go over to the lathe and uh, and see if we can part this piece off now. All right, got it set up. I break this thing the first time I use it after spending over an hour making it. I'll be pretty upset. I don't think we will.
proper shape or maintenance. She bored, wanted to do something, so she can oil the shaper. She can oil my shaper any day. I'm just out here messing around, really, and uh, you know the wife comes out here and she'll sit and watch me, you know, do whatever I'm doing, and sometimes she'll grab an oil can and start hitting all those little oilers. The little gets oilers, my kids, they also like the little flip-up caps and they'll walk around and, you know, I don't know, I used to do it too though, when I was young, I remember hitting all those little oil uh, fittings, I always thought that was, you know, neat, and I guess uh, most people are the same. Now I got a quick little project here, I, I, I need this piece of A2 tool steel and I want to just clean it up. It is from a previous project that I did uh, for a customer where I had to make a grip pattern, just a 90 degree, uh, one millimeter spacing, one millimeter deep uh, grip face, and uh, this was my practice piece. So I need to, I want to clean it up because I got a use for it here uh, coming up. I want to make a uh, a holder for my quarter inch boring bars, similar to the one that I made for the um, 3 8 bars that I've showed you guys. Uh, if you watched some of my previous videos, you've seen it and we actually you know, made it on video. So I'm going to make another one just for myself, uh, but I want to make it out of this piece of A2. And like I said, i got to clean it up for it first, and I think that's a good job for the shaper. So I'm going to start it up, and usually when I start this thing, like it's been sitting for probably you know, a week or better without being run. So I'll start it. I'll let the oil circulate in it. It has a sight glass back here. I'll show you. You know, a lot of you guys have done seen it, but for the ones that haven't, this is a has a pump that pumps oil up into this tower back here, and it's got a glass ring so you can see that it's oiling. And it gravity it drips that oil down in these little tubes, and it goes, you know, to all the critical surfaces on the shaper. So. I'm going to get this thing fired up and get it going, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. And just several holes where that oil gets pumped up. It's dispersed on a plate that has holes in it. And it drips out down into copper tubes that are running around on this machine, and that's how this machine's oiled. It's the old version. It's the way they did it up in the 50s.
not a bad it's not a bad finish for for a two or for anything really. It's a ten thousandths depth finish cut, a little spot there, and ten thousandths per scrub. I guess here's the block that I just squared up on the shaver, and I want to you know, show you guys how accurate this whole machine is. You know, a lot of you guys know that it's a pretty accurate machine, but I want to you know, show it for those who, uh, you know, some people find it hard to believe that a big old machine like that can be really accurate, but uh, they can if uh, you do your part. And all I did was push this down on those parallels made sure it was seated well and I made sure of course that the machine is trammed proper but uh, our step over lines are about a tenth you know that's what our indicator tips falling down in so I'm going to say that you know we're within two tenths it's showing one here but given the you know the reading across let's come over here so, Just assume that that's zero. So within a couple tenths, you know, that's not bad. Um, you know, in fact, I think that's pretty good for an old machine like that. So uh, just figured I'd. Uh, if you look at that finish, it's not perfect, but don't need to be good enough. And it, uh, I think that garden's actually looking pretty good. The lower garden, um, the upper garden, done really well. Other than the, of course, like I said, the tomatoes and stuff. And I don't, I don't know if it was just too wet of weather, or you know, who knows. From one year to the next, you never know what you're going to get when you garden. You're pretty much at the mercy of the weather. In the cutter grinder, I've got another piece of that Illumina Bisque ceramic. The same thing that I done last week on video. I got to make two more, and uh, I'm not going to, of course, do it again on camera. But uh, you know, I keep this cutter grinder running all the time. I really do like this machine. It's opened up so many doors in a shop like mine, and uh, I'm le I learn something every time I run it, even if it's a repeat job. You, know, you get better at grinding. You get better at the setups. So I really do, you know, take advantage of this thing every time, every chance I get uh, to use it, I do. I've got a job over here, a job that I normally don't do on camera, but I do them, you know, do that kind of stuff all the time uh, that I want to share with you. So let's go over there and I'll show you what I'm doing. All right, guys, so on the bench, I've got a DeWalt a four and a half inch angle grinder. And this is one of five that I have just like this and I uh, can't afford to have one down I mean if I run one the wife run ones and my two kids run one what if they have a friend over so <laughs> I gotta make sure to get this guy back up and running as quick as possible um, this has been sitting on the floor for about a, a week I ordered some parts for it I already tore it down and, and looked at what was wrong with it and I just grabbed it and picked it up and I found underneath what looks to be a young black widow spider. Let me bring you in and show you. All right, now I'm not sure about this guy, but uh, its body sure looks like one. That doesn't have the really sharp black color, the glossy black that a lot of them, a lot of the black widows have. We have a whole bunch of black widow spiders around here. All right, so I decided to go up on the hill and find one to show you. Because you want to see one. Because you want to see one, there won't be one. Alright, so we found one. Now, this is a real Black Widow. I don't think the one I was seeing in the shop is, but uh, this girl is real. I mean, it's pretty obvious with that red, red dot on her back. Get a good picture of her. You don't want to stick your fingers under any rocks around here anyway because these are pretty easy to find really. Took me uh, 10 minutes clipping over a few rocks. She 
should have the eye glass on the other side. Uh, around the house, me and my son will sometimes go out and flip over rocks just to just to find them. Um, and uh, they're pretty dangerous if you're not um, familiar with them. Um, you know, look them up. That they uh, they can cause some people massive issues, and uh, they're not something to actually play with. So I'm gonna get rid of this guy. Throw him outside. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Let's see if I can get you a good shot. Not 100% for sure, but uh, I think so. Anyway, I'm going to go throw this thing outside and uh, we'll fix this grinder. Okay, so the other day I was using this thing and it started spitting and sputtering. And as you can tell, probably by looking at this thing, I don't, I don't baby these. They're cheap enough to where you can, you know, use them and not worry about them. But parts are pretty cheap too, at least basic parts. And, uh, and I'll fix them if... You know, it's something simple. So, already ordered and got in my parts, and it's basically a brush and a brush holder. Uh, so, we're going to swap these out. Now, I always, every one that I have, I take in after I use it for a while and change the grease and the head and stuff. So, I've never worn out a head on one of these if you, you know, service them just a little. So, let me, uh, let me grab some tools. We'll take this guy apart and uh, change these brushes. So it's a pretty basic job to do this, and uh, I think anybody could do it if they attempted it. And I've done several. Um, if you put these things under a really heavy load, you use them hard, uh, you'll burn the brushes out of them fairly fast. They're kind of soft. And uh, I've changed the brushes in many of mine. All but one, to be honest, well, the screwdriver doesn't fit this very well. Um, all but one of mine has had the brushes changed in it. Get out of there, you jump. Yeah, I normally don't smash those spiders. I mean, they, they eat a lot of bugs and stuff around here. And killing one, as many as there are around here, we deal with brown recluse and the black widow. And uh, I'm really more afraid of the... I'm not afraid of any of them. I don't like them, but... Uh, of the uh, widow or the recluse. At least the widow's got a big bulbous body and fairly easy to see on at least the larger ones. All right, so as you can see, maybe we got a brush holder that's burnt out, and the brushes are smoked in this thing. And uh, the switch just lifts out. Ooh, there goes another one. Wow, this thing's full of them. See that? I hate those things. That's what happens when you leave stuff sitting on the floor around here. Take our dead man switch out. These are not an industrial grade grinder, but they're pretty good for just, uh, you know, homeowner shop use. spring up here without well, breaking it hopefully behind this little holder pop our brush off and pretty basic the old brush out and I need to get this pin out of here This is a bad holder. Where it got hot, it burnt a hole in the uh, in the holder. I normally don't do these kind of repairs um, you know, on my channel, but they're pretty interesting. I think I enjoy doing them, and it seems like the. It looks at a lot of videos, a lot of people don't mind watching them, so why not? Oh, 
with a little retainer screw back in. Make sure that floats good enough. Get brushes. There's that side. It's really that easy. Hopefully this thing works after this. Should. I think that was pretty obvious a problem. This brush holder could have used a replacement too. Put any more money in this thing. The commutator on this is not uh, in perfect shape, but if I get, you know, a couple months of use out of it, it'll pay for the parts I've replaced. Alright, there's that. I need to make sure these wires are routed proper, or else they'll get in that fan. Shoot up. Alright. Paddle switch. I like the paddle switch version of this, not the on off on the back. I think that's it. There we go. Sometimes it takes a little persuasion. screws back in it and we'll try it out. Right, let's plug this guy in here and try it. I think, you know, the majority of folks who watch my channel are more than probably capable of fixing something like this. If you're one of those who are not sure, at least try. You know, worst thing can happen is you don't fix it. You can learn something. There we go. Easy enough. Two burn up brushes and a brush holder. I think it cost me you know less than fifteen less than fifteen dollars I think total. Shipped. So I mean, it's worth it to get this back going, even if it lasts a couple months. Well guys, I think that's about it for this week. Um, that was pretty random, but it's what I have this week. I've been extremely busy, you know, mostly outside of the shop and with projects that you've already seen before. Finishing up my hub, working on the Illumina ceramic uh, or the Illumina bisque ceramic, you know, those are all jobs that I have to do and then I still have to film, you know, I want to film something for you guys on top of it. So, just haven't had a lot of shop time, probably a couple hours. So, got my uh, internal grinding. Um, adapter for my cutter grinder and I was looking at it the other day and found that it was busted. Uh, I was wanting to get into a little ID grinding or at least attempting it and uh, that kind of shot down my plans. So I think I'm going to have to make a new one of these which may be kind of tough. I think it's a brown and sharp number five to a quarter inch collet. So that may be a pretty interesting thing to make. We'll see. Um, anyway, I appreciate you guys watching like always, all my old subscribers, all my new ones, and uh, for sure my patrons, you know, you guys uh, make it possible. So, thanks guys. If you haven't, make sure to subscribe to the channel by clicking on my little guy up here and hit the bell for notifications. And as always, I'll see you next time.